Division 1 and Mayo's comprehensive win over Galway in Salt Hill sees them top the division on a plus 8 points difference with 2 points gained. Then we have the three Ulster teams also collected wins on the Sunday, Tyrone, Monaghan and Derry, all achieving wins. Tyrone, uh, not 17 to 111 against Ross Common, and that was with a man down. I did say that Ross, the Rossies could come out and give them a game, but um, I think the man sending off made it a lot closer probably than it should have been. Tyrone got across the line. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they fare with 15 against other teams, but... Uh, they're still a force to be reckoned with in the league. Uh, the Ulster teams proving their strength with both Monaghan and Derry eking out one-point wins away from home in both games. And Mickey Hart at the main games again. 14 changes on the actual uh, team sheet that went out. Uh, is it worthwhile producing a programme anymore when managers do this? Monaghan, uh, a great result in Crow Park against Dublin. And Monaghan, the perennial backs for relegation, suddenly are Dublin the perennial backs for relegation again now after that loss. Monaghan certainly exposed a weak underbelly with three goals, um, you know, and Dublin will need to look at their defence and see how they cope with the likes of that uh, uh, going forward, particularly against the firepower of the likes of Kerry, Derry and Tyrone. So um, Dublin could be in a spot of bother if they don't get their house sorted. Kerry also tend to make a slow start to the league. Someone said there'd be a winter of discontent down in Kerry, but um, they obviously haven't come out brandishing and all, all, all guns because um, once again, the Ulster team's strong. Um, over the weekend, the Ulster teams, in essence, collected 17 out of a possible 18 points. The only drawing team were from Anna. The rest all won. So that says a lot about the strength of Ulster football. Some say they take the McKenna Cup very seriously. I would say the only really competitive provincial championship left is Ulster, and they'll be strong in all the leagues they're in. That's a prediction for you. At this stage, if we looked at an overall league, the Ulster teams would be topping the three across all four divisions, or all three divisions that they're actually in. So that's Division 1. A couple of things to look forward to, and I'll deal with them more in my preview. So, well, of next week's games, Derry versus Tyrone at Celtic Park, uh, proving once again two Ulster teams. That's going to be a full house, and it'll be a cracker. And it could be one of those ones that could tip the balance with the girls to league honours and maybe relegation dogfights as well. We'll see later. Monaghan versus Kerry. That'll be a true uh, reflection of where Monaghan are. I think the shackles off them a little bit. With Rory Began not there and a few others missing, some of the others got the chance to step up to the mark and duly proved themselves against Dublin, who would have been, the Metropole certainly would have been looking to win at home, so not good for them to start with a loss, particularly when they at one stage looked to have the game well in control. But um, Kerry also will be smarting a bit, so they will. Uh, so Monaghan and Kerry would prove to be another one that is of interest to us next week. But we'll have a look at those in the preview programme. For now, we have three Ulster teams winning their games in Division 1, sitting atop the table alongside Mayo. Mayo would look to be favourites at this stage, come out very strong. Division 2 sees Donegal, Calvin and Armagh atop the table with Fermanagh in hot pursuit. Ulster teams did really well in Division 2 this weekend and started off strongly. Fermanagh, a great result away to me. Um, weren't expected, me expected to be strong in this one at home. Not 12 to 1 9. Fermanagh eked out a draw. Well done to them. Gets them a point and gets them off and running. Great result for Calvin away to Kildare. Not 16 to not 12. Uh, also puts them on the board on a plus 4 points a difference. Arma, well, uh, you've heard Kieran McGinney's interview with regards to the match. Not 12 to not 11 against Loud. This Army team struggled to get across the line, missed a few open goal chances as well. Um, I listened to Cairns' interview. Yes, they got a win and everything else, but uh, realistically, it is very much same old, same old, and we're still just crawling across the line against teams we should be beating comprehensively, particularly if we look at Donegal. Arma, Donegal and Cork were the three favourites starting out on Saturday. For promotion out of Division 2, they were the three to be actually, you know, battling it out. And Armagh 
get a one point win over Loud, Donegal play Cork and what was a supposed promotion battle. And Donegal absolutely annihilated Cork 120 to 2 6, with McBrady getting 1 6 on his own. Um, he almost got the Cork score on his own, so he did. So, you know, Donegal hit the ground running the McGuinness factor big time with them. Um, and Armagh play Meath at the weekend and Calvin played Donegal. So those will be two defining games from the point of view of Meath will be hungry to get a point, but they have to travel to Armagh, get the points. They're travelling to Armagh. And Donegal and Calvin could actually decide wh- what direction uh, Calvin's course of travel is over the, over the weekend from the point of view of towards the top or the bottom of the table. Division 2, packed full of problems for any team who doesn't get off to a fast start. I would suggest Armagh need to up their scoring rate. They're the only team across the divisions with a not 12 uh, or worse scoring rate who actually won their game. So, um, you know, uh, that's not good enough at that level. And if they're, you have aspirations towards an Ireland or Division 1 or whatever, they need to be scoring more and they need to be hitting these smaller teams heavily. So at this stage, Yes, the table, much as expected, with Donegal, Calvin, Armagh and Fermanagh up on the top. I think Calvin are the, the surprise package up there. That was expected to be Cork. But the league, of course, will throw up upsets at the start. But if we're talking about Ulster teams and their record over the weekend and they're coming out of a strong McKenna Cup campaign and everything else, Armagh probably hit the ground worst of the teams and still got a cross for a win tends to be what we've been saying for the last couple of seasons. Well, Division 3 have only two Ulster teams in it, and both of them were victorious at the weekend. Uh, Antrim topped the table on their points difference of plus 7 after an excellent win against Limerick away. Down also travelled. He travelled to Ockram to play Wicklow and came out five-point winners in an exciting game as well. Down obviously uh, quoted as favourites for... Uh, one of the promotion spots after their run in this division last year and after their capitulation in the Talchin Cup where they saw themselves let a Super 16 slot slip out of their grasp. And I think they'll want to top the table and ensure that they grasp that spot and get back up into the All-Ireland Series proper. And that's their main goal for this season, I'd say, and they've made a pretty good start. So Antrim and Down, both, both off to good starts. Antrim probably... Uh, less favoured in this division but a good start for them and hopefully they keep it going as well and they added to the Ulster tally over the weekend uh, both recording wins so well done to both of them uh, thank you to GA League Tables for the graphics that I've used from the point of view of uh, the actual League Tables uh, I pulled them off Twitter and they're very very comprehensive and very clear thanks to them for those okay That's me signing off for now. And the next you'll hear from me is this week's preview, this coming weekend's preview. Okay, bye for now.